Hey guys, uh, I'm sitting here with former first team All-American at Pepperdine, ATP tour player, and now actually playing in the Challenger down at Calabasas. Guy that I get the pleasure of working with every day, Mr. Uh, Calais Hansen. Hey bud. How's it going? How's it uh, going? Great man, good. Yeah. Um, so I thought I'd just uh, pick your brain a little bit about some things. Uh, first is, everyone wants to know like how do you get to even be at that kind of level? So can you maybe tell us just a little bit about your training maybe in your formative years, like teenage years and stuff like that? Like what, what did your weekly schedule look like? So um, I started playing when I was about seven. And, you know, first in the beginning I had a lot of fun and I really wasn't too serious about it. And then it got to a point where, you know, I started seeing I had some talent. And uh, I had about, I probably played about two hours a week, or sorry, two hours a day, uh, maybe five times a week. Uh, did some tournaments on the weekends. Um, I didn't really have a lot of private lessons. It was a lot of very organized clinics. I played a lot myself. I called out my friends and other stuff. So. Um, but I got to a point where I was actually trying to do a lot of outside stuff. Like I, I did my running, I did my jump ropes, I did a lot of physical things outside. Um, I did a lot of conditioning. Um, so I was pretty fit. Like I was skinny and tiny, but I was pretty fit, you know. So um, and I worked on my game. Um, and then as I got along, I went to a tennis academy at like 15 or 16, and that was very big for me because I tend to. You know, play with at that level of, of players all the time. Uh, it's very high level play. Uh, you know, four or five hours a day. Uh, that kind of made me take a big jump in my, my games. So to get to that level, basically, at some point you had to switch to where you're going almost four or five hours a day of training. Yes. So I started pretty, you know, a little basic, and then absolutely, and I got a little more involved with the coach. Uh, that could kind of see my 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 strengths and weaknesses and. Uh, I think that's super important. Uh, somebody you can kind of relate to, and you have a good good relationship with, you can trust. And, um, and yeah, I definitely played a lot of a lot of tennis. Uh, mornings we did a lot of uh, drilling and um, you know playing format, like a lot of like live balls, field to it. You know, a lot of approach shots coming and playing points. And in the afternoon we did a lot of matches, uh, just working on serve, serve attack game, serve volley. Oh, um, so, you know, before your matches, do you have any kind of pre-game ritual or anything you think about maybe before you step on the court, um, any kind of attitude you try to have or any strategies you want to implement or like what do you, what do you think about before you step on the court? Um, so like when I wake up and stuff, you know, I always have like, I, I, if I play early in the morning or something, I have a ritual where I always, I, I always need to wake up a certain amount of hours before, you know, I got my breakfast, I get ready. Um, you know, warm up for me was pretty important, but it's always hard a lot of times. Um, in terms of tactic, um, I just try to play my game. Um, I try to focus on what I'm good at. Um, I want to make sure my service warmed up well. You know, that's part of my my strength. Um, just being aggressive in the beginning of the match. I tend to when I play bad, I always were defensive in the beginning, and you know, you so want to win so much, and you kind of analyze your opponent but I really try to uh, try to play out in the beginning when I did that I played much better tennis if I started to push and even if I was up 4-2 and it was not a good feel I didn't like that feel so I try to really you know I always analyze my opponent you know it's important to to you know if he doesn't have a good back in return or whatever it is I'm trying to like put a lot of focus on that but ultimately you know I needed to come forward I needed to serve well you know I, I have my game plan so I like that, you know, I'm trying to get a lot of people to know who they are and figure out what their strengths are and implement it and yeah. also make sure they get into a good feel before they play yeah. or in the beginning of the match, so that's good. Um, so, you know, how do you deal with momentum changes? You know, let's say your opponent's a little bit on a run, they've won a couple of games in a row, or you maybe you've made a quite, quite a few errors in a row, like, what, what kind of tricks do you do to kind of think about things differently? So, when I when I winning, if I'm playing well, I try to speed up the game as fast as I can, you know, I try to not, you know, I kind of, it's kind of like a train crash, you just see him falling, but when I lose a little bit, I try to, you know, I try to, you know, get the towel, I try to slow it down, I try to stick to what I'm good at. Uh, a lot of times I think I, I, like if you're not playing well, you get rattled up, you worry so much about other stuff, uh, just focus simple things like watch the ball, maybe if I'm not timing it well, maybe shorten my backswing, 
a little bit and uh, just kind of do what I'm good at and, and not get out of the rhythm because a lot of times when I when I do lose something like that I get too much into the opponent's game you know, right, right. opponent's tempo opponent's yeah. game so I try to get back to my game as fast as I can uh, don't try to show too much emotion that I'm, I'm pretty calm when I played I was that before when I was younger I was more aggressive and angry but I learned through, through a lot of losses and stuff that that's not the way to do it um, so I'm trying to stay very calm and, and it's kind of like a poker game you know yeah. um, but um, Definitely, um, just slow the game down. If you, you know, like I see kids walk. You know, when you watch players, they walk just through the the, the side change. You know, they don't even drink water. You know, you gotta like do your same ritual every time. You know? right. Um. So let's say you're, you know, up five two in the second or whatever, closing out matches or playing with the lead. A lot of people, you know, when they're playing behind, it's a little bit easier for them mentally because, you know, they can just focus on playing. But yeah. a lot of times when they're up, you know, closing out a match, is there anything you think of differently or how you go about trying to close out a match? I think the, um, it's, that thing is always hard. Like, you, it doesn't matter where, um, if you're a competitor, anybody in, in all different levels, it's like, you know, you can feel so good until that 5-4 game and you can be winning every game so easy. And then that last game, suddenly the opponent starts making returns, and he gets, you know, he gets kind of a tight movement uh, or, or tight, tight match there. I'm just trying to stick to. Um, it's easier for me because I always had a good serve. So when I when I'm at five four serving for the match, I try to um, I try to stick with serves that I'm good at. Like like I'm giving this up. Uh, I'm like my wide uh, wide serve on the first court. So I get that guy off. I think that it's a high percentage serve. I use my slice. Um, I don't go for as crazy flat serve. I maybe slice a little bit more. Um, I definitely try to play a little more aggressive. Uh, especially lately, when I'm playing now, I'm, I'm not so worried about it. So I'm trying to really like, I gotta win it. Because a lot of times when you play good players, uh, they're not gonna give it to you. So you're gonna have to go out there and win it. Um, and very few players just give you a game like that at that moment because they know that this is it. So I definitely just try to simplify. I try to just do whatever I've done good. This, you know, I think about what I've done good the whole match, and I try to uh, really get a good start. Like the first two points are huge, you know. If I serve for the match at five four, like if I can get the first two points, then then your body kind of loses up, you know. But if you have two tight shots, then you know, then it's a battle. So right, right. Um, lastly, uh, do you have any maybe a, a crazy match story or any? Anything that sticks out in your brain of uh, you know one of your bigger matches uh, in your career or something something crazy that happened on the court? Um, that's a tough one. Um, I think the, I have one that was a junior one that I, I never forget. Um, that I thought was hilarious. Was so I was playing in the 14. I was 13. We played in the 14 Swedish Championship. And uh, I played the number, I was number ranked number three in the nation. I played the two guy in the nation, but we were both one year young. So we played first round, and he was hard to tough to beat, you know. And I actually was winning, I had the match point, and then in the end, um, he, he held that game, and I got another two match points. And we had this huge snowstorm coming, or rainstorm, or whatever it was. It was crazy, we had to stop, <laughs> and, uh, and then after that, you know, everybody, we waited for like, you know, like eight to ten hours you know try to dry the court it was clay court everybody all the friends came up and said oh this guy is going to do this and this and, and he's going to turn his match around and then uh the kid went in and, you know i was so nervous and, you know and we walked out and play we got a night match playing and he served first serve out second serve hit the net and then out and all this audience <laughs> collected there everybody was there and uh, everybody was like giving like oh and then they start applauding like so I thought that was kind of a That's funny hilarious. funny story. Alright, thanks bud. Appreciate Thank you. the time. Okay. Alright.